This is Gavin. He's a 16-year-old artist and creator with 13 million followers across all platforms. In this interview, we discuss some of the realities of chasing a singing dream at such a young age. You kind of start to realize, like, this has taken, like, a toll over me. Some of his experiences. I actually met Selena Gomez there. Really? And at the end of this video, we discuss some of the rumors that he's had to face. Yes, I still like Piper. Like, go ahead, think <laughs> that if you really want to think that. This is what I needed when I was starting my music career. This is The Logan Alexandra Show. So you've been doing music for a long time. Mm -hmm. What was your first song that you released? Pretty sure the first song that I ever released, it was called Holla Back. It's very cheesy. It's not, there ain't no holla back, girl. No, it's no. like it's like holla back one time. I'm gonna, I don't even want to sing it because no. like, it's like so like, I mean, it's not like terrible. I was also like 10 years old. Look at the, your little picture and your hair. Look at me, dude. <laughs> Killing it. I was so tiny. So tiny. Yeah. And the pose. <laughs> Look where we are now, man. For me, putting out my first song, I, w I didn't know a lot about music, you know what I mean? So, like, I didn't really have standards to, like, what I really wanted when I was releasing music because, like, I was super little. And I didn't know a lot about the industry, so. You don't need to know it. 10 years old you yeah said you're 10 yeah. years old yeah you're just putting stuff out and seeing where it goes so do you think it was beneficial to start that young i mean i think it definitely helped me grow like i feel like it was beneficial to me to start earlier you know professionally getting into music you know like production you know getting into real studios and you know like learning more about the process and writing music working with other writers like it's just the big build up in the process that's just like i feel like so important like it's like it's that one piece of the puzzle that you need to be in the music industry. You know what I mean? I think that's why you are where you're at right now at 16 years old. Cause like yeah. when I was 16, I didn't know what I wanted, what music was like. I was where you were probably at at 10 years old. Like mindset yeah. wise, I had no clue what I was doing, mm -hmm. but you've been able to establish that cause you started so early. What's it like, like growing up in the public eye and you have a lot of eyes on you. What's it like growing up with that? It's cool. The, the the stressful part about it is making sure that you're always good because like sometimes like you get like you get like so caught up in like you know the industry and like your your work and and what you're doing and you're just like you kind of forget about yourself and when you hit the realization of yo what happened to like yo like I gotta make sure I'm good you kind of stop you kind of start to realize like this has taken like a toll over me like it's consumed me you know what I mean because like when you get hundreds of thousands of dollars thrown at you and hundreds of thousands of millions of followers thrown at you it's like that is like it's like like it all it's all coming at you you know what I mean so it's like you kind of forget about the person controlling everything so I mean the most difficult part about it, like, growing up was just, or, like, growing, I mean, I'm still growing up. I'm only, like, 15, 16, right? But, like, I've been doing this since I was 11. I mean, I hit a million subscribers when I was, like, 12. So, like, I mean, I've been in it for a minute. So, I mean, yeah, I guess, I guess the toughest part is just, like, being in this industry is, like, the most stressful thing mentally. Mm -hmm. You know, making sure you're always... You're doing what you need to do, making sure you're posting, making sure you're you're doing your music, you're making enough songs, making enough YouTube videos, what's your, what your next YouTube video is, what your next song is, when your next release is, when your next TikTok you're posting is, when like, it's all just a bunch of things that you kind of like have to learn how to micromanage and... While also being a kid and going yeah. to school and yeah. Well, also, yeah, while also being a kid and making time for like your social life and... And but like I would say I have a very very good balance between like my work and my social life, mm -hmm. you know I keep it I would say very separate. So it's like I don't know I think I'm really I'm really happy with where I'm at right now in life and in my situation and where I'm going. I think right now is probably like the the best place I've been in in, a, in a, for a while. Another thing that you started really young, you went on the Boys of Summer tour, right? Yeah. In 2018, you were like how old? Like 10. 10 years old yeah i would have to say i was probably like 10 10 years old yeah. 11 years old were you yeah. more nervous then getting on stage or is it more nerve-wracking now i mean that was my first time like ever really performing at shows so yeah i would say i was definitely nervous back then you know
I mean, I feel like I still I feel like I am. I'm not nervous. It's one of those things where it's like I'm not nervous, but it's like things always have potential of not going in your favor. So it's like it's like it's like playing the lottery. It's like I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. But like right before I step on stage, I'm like I'm like oh my god. Like I'm literally like all right, you got this. Like lock in. And then the second like I step on stage and I say my first word, it's like everything's gone. It's the unexpected for me. Like yeah. walking into something, you don't know what the venue looks like. You don't know like who's there, like how many people are going to show up. Like that's what gets yes. the nerves. Yes, yes, 100%. And what also gets my nerves is since you, I'm actually, I'm glad you brought that up. Because I'll be like, like I'll be talking to like my mom or like someone and they'll be like, um, like are you going to do this on stage or like are you going to do that on stage? And I'm like. I don't even know how big the stage is. I don't even know what the venue looks like. Like, I'm going to have to let you know when I get there. Because I, I, okay, so <clears throat> I went to Paris for Fashion Week. Like, I want to say like three months ago, I had a performance there. It was like my fifth day there, and I had a performance. And I'm like, okay, yeah, bet. And they're like, oh, it's at a club. It's at like this bar or whatever. And I'm like, okay. So like, you guys are building a stage, right? And I'm like, yeah. And so I get there like hours before this like party starts or whatever. And they're, like, setting up the stage, and I'm like, where's the stage? And they're like, oh, this is it right here. I'm like, oh, that's the stage. And I, I swear, I swear to God, it was probably the size of that box. Like, that was my platform to stand on. The and they song? were like, yeah, yeah, no, literally. And I was, like, performing, and I was, like, like going, like, side. Just, like, like, like back like, and forth, yeah. yeah. But moments like that, like, teach you to appreciate and, like, learn how to, like, interact with a crowd without having room to move. And, like, it teaches you how to just, like, be better at other things i guess you know what i mean yeah. <laughs> i'm so, tired <laughs> you know it's, it's early. early it's early it's a little early it's 10 28 so what's your songwriting process look like now at 16 years old my songwriting process it depends because sometimes i'll go into the studio and i'll work with other writers and we'll just you know bounce off each other i'll let them do their thing but um other times when i'm just in the studio and like I'm making my own music just, like, for myself. I'm just freestyling and, like, you know, searching for a melody first, and then, you know, I build off of that. I just find it so much more real and, like, relatable when you're, like, genuinely speaking about the thoughts that are on your head at that current moment. And, like, you know, I've seen artists like Deuce, Juice World, Kid Leroy, like, you know, that's how they write a lot of their music, too. And it's, I mean, you hear it, it's amazing. So, like, that's how my writing process is in the studio. I'll just go in there. And I'll just, like, do a bunch of takes, get a melody. When it just comes to your head, do you usually keep that melody? Like, that's what you release? Or do you sometimes refine it later? It depends. It depends on how I'm feeling about it. Because, like, I'll, I'll go in the studio and I'll be like, oh, this, this, is, like, this is a good song like, that I'll make. And then I'll go home and I'll listen to, like, The Rough. And I'll be like, nah. This is no, this isn't it. I feel like I've just always been like, we'll make another project. You know what I mean? Make something else. Yeah, in the same way. I don't know why that is. So, like once I write something, like that's what it is. Like yeah. I don't go back and refine mm -hmm. it. I'm like, that's what I was inspired by, so I'm gonna keep it. Yeah, exactly. and either release it or completely trash it. <laughs> that's 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 just that's just what you have to do sometimes. All or nothing. Yeah, yeah. So you've worked with some really high class, great producers. Talk mm -hmm. about some of the people that you've worked with to produce your music. Yeah, I've worked with. A lot of great producers. Um, I was working with Hit Boy for uh, for a good minute, for probably like three months, I would say. Um, I was locked in with him, and then I've I've worked with you know shout out to Wit Wit Kane, um, Benjamin Lasnier, I think that's how you say it. I don't know his producer tags Benjamin Benjamin. He got Benjamins. Um, shout out to Benjamin. Um, man, the list goes on. I've worked with a ton of you know amazing producers. And you worked with. The babies. Oh yeah, team. I worked. I worked with their team. Um, I don't, they're not producers, but I was. Uh, I was working with Arnold and Carter from South Coast Music Group for for a few months as well. Uh, they came to LA, and I was recording with them at um, uh, Interscope. I was recording at Interscope Studios for like three days straight. I actually met Selena Gomez there. Really? I didn't like officially meet her, but I was in the car waiting with Brian, and we see this like Escalade pull up. I'm like, who who do you think like there's gotta be someone in there? He's like, Yeah, that's definitely someone. So they open the door, she gets out, it's Selena Gomez, and she literally like she has to walk right by our car and our windows down. So I'm like, 
Holy. I'm like, Brian, it's Selena Gomez. I'm like, look, look, look. You just freeze. And she's like, she's like about to walk past us. And I, I like, I looked at her. I was like, hello. And she was like, hey. And she just walked in. I was like, oh my God. That's Selena nice. Gomez you said hi, though. Say hi to me. I was like, yeah. whoa, that was cool. So you're basically best friends with Selena Gomez. Yeah. 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 <laughs> no, I wish, though. <laughs> she's cool, though. Yeah. Are you intimidated walking into a studio like that, like Interscope Studios, and working with high class producers? <laughs> or nervous? intimidated no nervous maybe i would say it's more of like a i get like excited nerves i kind of i kind of look at it differently like i look at it as just like i'm just a human who loves making music who loves creating things and i'm in a room with people who love creating things too and we're all just here to help each other so i mean i kind of have to i kind of like looking at things like that you release a lot of music like 2020 to 2021 i think you released like an entire catalog you could have released a whole album a few months ago i was with my friend nate good i think he came out here for like a month and i think every single day we were just in the studio 12 hour eight hour 12 hour sessions just banging out music for a month straight but i made like c10 this song called destruction exit exit is unreleased isn't it yeah exit is unreleased are you gonna release that one or what what's the deal with that i don't know (laughs) I gotta ask. I gotta ask the the fans. I gotta ask the supporters. I don't know. I gotta see what they it's want. It's a good one. I know how to make an entrance. You know how to make an exit. Do you just like make music and then let them sit and decide? Maybe I'll release like based off of people's reactions to the song online. Because you promote, you posted the song, but then didn't release it. Yeah, I mean, it's always good to like. I feel like I always like posting it before I release it because it always gives like like room for feedback and i love like hearing people's feedback whether it's like criticizing or positive like i don't know i like i like hearing what people have to say so like if everybody likes it i'll be like okay good i know this is a good song i should probably release this or i know this is a good vibe people like this kind of stuff that i'm doing so everything i make i like to like give a snippet of or tease or something like that you know what i mean it's an interesting way to do it. Yeah. Because I sort of do it the opposite way. I'll create the song, and then when I know the release date, I'll start to promote it. But I think that's a really good way to, like, engage your fans to see what they are yeah. interested in hearing. Yeah, I feel like it's... I just feel like it's better to do it the other way, because, like, then you're you're posting a song, and you're, like, making a song, and you're like, should I release this? And let's say it blows up. Let's say your snippet blows up or your skip blows up. Then it's like, everyone's like, drop it. We want this. We want this. So then it's like, okay... Here's the release date. Everybody, like, get ready. So I feel like that's just, like, a better way to keep people on their toes. Yeah. You know what I mean? For some reason, I thought that artists were faking when they did that. Like, the song was already going to be released, but you were just, like, using that as a promotional tactic. But I like that that's not true. Like, you're genuinely asking your fans, like, should I drop this song? I mean, maybe some people do it. Maybe some. I'm, I'm I'm not exactly sure. Your song, Lonely... I think that's like my favorite of yours. I was watching all the promo videos. It's oh, running so on lonely. Running on lonely. Sorry. Yeah. I worked on that song with uh, a few people from MGK's team who worked with Machine Gun Kelly, um, K Thrash, Kevin Thrasher. He um, he produced the song. Funny story behind that song. I uh, I woke up. I think the session was at like twelve, and his place was like an hour away from here. So like, obviously, I'm getting up at like. 9 a.m. Like, I got up early, and I'm not going to get in, like, the detail, but, like, it was a really bad morning. Like, my manager was tripping about something. He was, like, this my old manager, and he was, like, trying to, like, tell me to take some stuff down or, like, telling me to, like, get rid of my whole music catalog and this and that, and, like, he was, like, threatening things, and I was, like, oh, my God, bro. And he's, like, you have to go to this session today. I was, like, okay. So he, like, killed my vibe, and I was, like, like I don't even want to do this. And I was just like, oh. but I powered through and we ended up, it ended up being really fun. And like, we ended up making a really, really good song. I really like the promotional videos that you've done really? with, with the song. Yeah, they're fun to watch. Thank like you. I'm hooked. I'm watching. It. I'm like, I want to listen to this song. I get like Justin Bieber, the kid Leroy. I don't know if those are like inspirations like for you. Yeah. yeah. I mean, my biggest inspirations are Justin Bieber, Kid Leroy, Juice World, like my top those are like my top artists it's like all i listen to so um i mean i've been a believer since i was born same 
I had yeah. posters all over my room. I didn't have posters, but <laughs> I I had posters of in my head. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Yeah, I used to. I I mean, I'm still obsessed with Bieber, but like, I don't know. I think I've always looked at Justin Bieber as like an inspiration. Like, like, especially being an artist and being young in the industry, looking at someone like him is kind of like. I don't know. It's 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 just cool to see someone so similar, mm-hmm. like, go through something so much more extreme. And, like, it really shows you, like, what it does to you mm-hmm. if you do the wrong things. Mm-hmm. So I, I have a lot of respect for Bieber. Um, You were talking earlier about you being on the phone with your ex-manager, and he was, like, telling you to take down songs. Mm-hmm. It's a lot like the intro of your music video for Just Me, um, right? Yeah. That's the song, yeah. <laughs> Incredible acting for who played, to the. I think his name's Hutch, who played the manager. Literally exactly how the manager literally was like like it's not even exaggerated at all it's exactly how like, that's rough it was. yeah you're gonna give me your phone and i'm going to take the song down that's what's gonna happen i found it interesting like in each of your music videos you have like an intro usually of like an acting or like a, a thing at the beginning um is that something you like to do in a lot of them typically yes i was an actor um i was i've been in, I, I did a feature film Timecraft with Such a Pirates Cove like three years ago. You know, I've done movies, commercials, shows. When I'm dropping a song or like a music video, I try to like incorporate my acting and my YouTube, like, I don't know, like my charisma, you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, I'm trying to, you know, make sure all of it's in there, like people see every side of me when they're listening to my music. So, I don't know, I feel like it's just a fun little thing to do and people enjoy it and it, it keeps some sort of spark, so, yeah. That's something that I wanted to talk to you about because I think a lot of times like artists have to be on social media too, but it can so easily turn into like, oh, you're an influencer, you're a content creator rather than an artist. Mm -hmm. And so how have you tried to like get out of that box of like, I'm not a content creator, I'm an artist. People got to understand like, there's such a difference between like TikTok artists, like people who are like, trying to make music like <clears throat> there's a difference between somebody who has been making music and aspiring to be an artist before the time of tiktok mm-hmm. um versus like a tiktok f boy who like blows up on tiktok and sees one person make music and they're like oh my god like i can do music too and then they just start releasing terrible music and everyone's like now there's something called TikTok rappers or TikTok singers, TikTok artists. Like, I feel like it also, like, it blinds people from actually seeing talent when you give someone that label. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, when you you look at someone and someone brings them up as, like, a TikTok artist or something like that or a TikTok rapper, it's like, you automatically... Diminishes them. It automatically turns you off or, like, makes you, like, less open to, like... But, I mean... I released my first song when Musical.ly was still a thing. Like, I've been making music way before TikTok. Like, I'm just lucky enough to have accumulated enough followers on TikTok to just promote my music to. Like, I've been doing music way before TikTok, way before even TikTok rappers or TikTok singers, TikTok artists were like a thing. So, I mean, when it comes to keeping myself out of that box... I don't think I've ever really put myself in and I don't think anybody else has really put me in it. And I feel like if anyone ever tried to, I would just simply show them the facts and be like, that's not me. You got the wrong guy. Like if they actually took time to like see the people that I've worked with or like the work I've put in and, and, and the, the actual like talent of my music, people would be like, Oh wow, this is kind of this is actually good, because I mean like I've gained new fans who are like they'll literally listen to my music and they'll be like, oh wait, this is actually like really good, and I'm like, I told you. Yeah, they'll be like, it's actually good. Yeah, they'll be like it's actually good. I'll be like, like they're surprised. Yeah, I'm like, what? Like, yeah, like I told, like I'm capable of making that. Like I make good music. You just like, you just have to be open to listening to it and understanding yeah. it. Do you think you'll ever transition out of making? videos and do like just music and like just post music videos and I've built an audience on YouTube that I would feel bad almost like if I left them if I just like completely abandoned that so I feel like I would still upload like a video every week you know like a YouTube video every week you know kind of like what DDG does I don't know if you if you know who that is but like DDG 
he is <clears throat> the face of like YouTube rap, I'd say, or like showing people that you can transition and, you know, like become successful in other avenues. Because I mean, like he was a YouTuber before he was a rapper or while he was a rapper and he blew up on YouTube first. Then he blew up on music when he had that hit. That was that guy, Joji, who sings um, A Glimpse of Us. Glimpse you know that song? He Frank. was a YouTuber, yeah. I found Filthy that Frank. out recently, yeah. I found that out, like, last year. I yeah. used to, like, actually watch him. And I, like, I think I literally, like, I asked my brother, Jake, I was like, what does he do now? And he was like, oh, you don't listen to his music? I was like, like, what? He was like, oh, you know Joji? And I was like... I was literally like, like a legit what? artist, yeah. What like that is crazy. Yeah. He went from doing like that stuff to being like a multi platinum, yeah. like signed artist. Like that that really like shows me like, yo, mm -hmm. anything is possible. Yeah. Yeah. I wonder if it's his same audience though that like stuck with him. No. I think it's he created a whole new he, Yeah, he created a whole new yeah. audience and like lane for himself i give joji mad props for like the way he just completely changed lanes and like created his own avenue it's crazy what he did one of the things i was scrolling through your tiktok um i love how you handle criticism or just like rumors about you you'll just like make light of them you don't take uh, them too seriously there's this video of someone comparing young you to jojo siwa oh, and yeah. you like duetted it and it has like 11 million views because that popped off yeah. way too much i was like that's so hilarious because it's fun and you're not like taking life too seriously you're just like yeah this is funny and i've known i've known people that like literally will be like oh my god i took my new post down because like it was all hate comments and like and people were being so mean i'm like i mean i'll post a tiktok and the only thing i'll get is hate comments and i'll and i'll embrace it like i don't i don't find that like that's not like that's not something that's gonna demotivate me or like decline me in any sort of way mentally or physically like everything you post makes some someone feel a certain type of way mm. so you just got to look at it like that and understand that th that that comes with being in the spotlight or being accomplishing your dreams, chasing your dreams. A lot, a lot of people aren't are going to try to pull you back. Mm -hmm. I, I another thing I on this topic is feeding into like rumors mm -hmm. and like people think that you still are connected with like P that you like Piper and th those things and you'll sort of like make funny videos about like it people are so unoriginal like yeah. that's like half of my comments on everything is like yeah. do you still like piper scratch your hair if you like piper itch your neck if you like piper it's like oh my god can you not can you not just understand that like we were like 11 years old when we dated mm -hmm. and she's got like a full full-on boyfriend right now like she's doing her own thing and it's like i see those comments and i'm genuinely like i make fun of them i'm like i'm like you're just like you're crazy if you think I still like Piper. Like, mm -hmm. I mean, like, hey, if you want to think that, you know, think that. Yes, I still like Piper. Like, go ahead, think that if you really <laughs> want to think that. That's the clip they're gonna take. Yep. And <laughs> yep, guys, I still like Piper. I'm severely in love with her. Um, but no, like, I like guys. Come on, dude, come on. Like, really think about it. It's been like five years. I don't know why people still think that. It's it's funny. I guess it'll forever be a thing that's attached to me in my name. Nothing wrong with it. It's whatever. <laughs> I can't I can't be upset about the things I can't change. This is the last question I ask everybody. What's a dream so big that it scares you? I would have to say nothing. And not scare in a bad way. Yeah, I know I know what you mean. But I would have to say nothing. Because I think I know what I want. And I think that's what a lot of people don't know is they don't know what they want. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to them, they're like, whoa. But I think it's different for me because, like, I know what I want. I know what it takes. And I know what it looks like. So I have to already take that into consideration. And I have to deal with the fear factors. So it's like, I don't know, like being being one of the biggest artists in the world or being like the best artist, one of the best artists is like, 
I mean, I guess you could say like that's like a dream that's like scary or something, but then again, it's like not because like that's what I want to do, and like I don't know. I feel like yeah, nothing. I feel like I I am who I am, and I want to be what I want to be, and like whatever that is, I'm I'm not gonna go in scared or or with temptations or hesitations. Yeah. I don't know. That's, that's just good. me. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. No fear. No fear. Just confidence. Just confidence, baby. <laughs> well, thank you <laughs> for sitting down with me today and t- chatting with me. Thank you for having me. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure we'll chat again soon. 100%. We should, we should definitely do it. That was a good job. That was a good job. That was awesome.